Hello, my fellow Americans. I am Bud Lowry, and I am baking through Dylan Hulse's book, and thank you for joining me today. If I could describe baking through this cookbook in only one word, it would be absolutely amazing. Thank you for all that have followed along with me. And I would like to put a disclaimer, actually. So this is the next year, actually. So the footage you're about to see, I filmed back in 23, and I had a completely different intro for this, um, but I didn't like that intro, and sorry for getting this video out late. It was supposed to be last Wednesday, and then I can't, it's going out this Wednesday, and uh, I was lazy and forgot to edit it and put it out, slash I literally just forgot. But so yeah, really sorry guys. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, this is the election cake, and so yeah, we're just gonna jump straight into it. This is the new intro. Hope you all had a happy new year and a merry christmas and uh yeah 2023 bud take it away okay let's begin so um real quick psa so in the recipe it calls for active dry yeast we do not have that we only have instant so um basically what it, the, the difference is is that with the active dry you have to proof it for it to kind of come alive and then you throw it in your recipe and then it right makes your bread rise or whatever you're putting it in uh, but in instant case, you just throw it in with your flour and your water, you stir it all together, and then it does its job. So, um, basically, um, if you're using the active dry, follow what it says in the book, which is to pretty much, uh, take a uh, cup and a half of lukewarm water, and then sprinkle your yeast on top, and then you're going to let it start to proof. It should only take like a couple of minutes. Um, but in our case, we're just gonna throw the yeast in with the flour, and then we're gonna put the water in afterwards, stir it up, and then let it sit for 30 minutes. So, let's do that now. So, take our all-purpose flour, and then we grab the measuring utensils. Measuring utensils. And it is how much flour? Cup and a half of all purpose. So, and also I um, I would give you, oh wait, what is it? Haha. So it's 210 grams for those of you who would like to measure out your ingredients instead of measuring them by volume. I've been meaning to start doing that, just I forget every time I start baking. It's just a little, a little bit more accurate because flour can get more compact with moving around, it can be fluffier, so, you know, if you're trying to be hella accurate, go with measuring or by weight. So, there's our flour, and then we're going to add five and a quarter teaspoons to, of our yeast into our flour. So, let's see here, teaspoon, 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 here we go. Okay, count with me, kids. One, two, Three, four, five, and then a quarter. A quarter, perfect. Okay, so now we got that all in there, and now we're going to put in our lukewarm water. So um, our uh, tap is really far away from the hot water heater, so I'm gonna get that going and start warming up. And then we'll put it in here, mix it all around until there's no clumps, and then let's sit for 30 minutes in a warm place. And as you can see, it is all nice and smooth, very low clumps. So now we're going to go sit this atop the wood stove for 30 minutes, and we're going to let it rise. So I, um, we let this sit in said warm place for uh, just about 30 minutes, and it, it was a smaller bowl, uh, but then it exploded, and then it was going all over the edges, and it was gi a giant mess. Everything's fine, though. We're good. It's in a bigger bowl now, so everything's fine. But so this has now risen, so now we're going to uh, take our fat of choice. Um, you can use, I've gone through this many times, you can use butter um, to grease your cooking devices. We typically use lard or um, lard or baking grease just because that's what we have on hand. And, uh, you know, it's just cool to say that you grease your stuff in lard. But so, what we're going to do is, since this is a bunt pan and they are notorious for getting everything stuck, just get in every single nook and cranny that you can because we do not want this junk getting stuck in there.
Guys, it's me, head editor slash only editor bud. Um, quick PSA, the next scene is going to be portrait, but it's horizontal. It's weird. I don't know. My phone's being weird, and I can't figure out how to switch it in my editing software. So, um, I'm sorry. It's going to be, like, weird, and if it hurts your eyes, look away. But, so, yeah, I'm working on it. Hopefully, this will be the last time. So sorry. Love y'all. Bye. So, as you can see here, we have our bunt pan. It has been greased, and then we dusted it with the flour. Uh, so now we have a quarter cup of moonshine. It calls for brandy, but um, we live in the mountains. We have moonshine and pretty much nothing else. So uh, that's what we're working with. So we're going to take our alcohol of choice, and then we are going to uh, put a cup and a half of dried uh, cherries in here. It calls for uh, raisins, golden raisins, and something called a, a, a cur cur curtnut. Curtinets, I'll put it on the screen. Um, I we don't have any of them, nor have I ever heard of them. But um, so we are just gonna use dried cherries because they're delicious, and I use them for basically everything else as it is. So again, a cup and a half. So that's a half cup. As two cups, and that is a cup and a half. Perfection. Okay. So now we're just going to go in with the spatula just to kind of coat them all on that delicious alcohol. I shouldn't say delicious alcohol, I've never tasted it actually, but you, you, you get the gist, you get the point. Okay, so now that that is soaking, we're going to set this off to the side. And now we will bring together our uh, flour and our spices. So I need to gather some spices and I will be right back. So over here I got the uh, dried cherries. Oh wait, there we go. Uh, dried cherries soaking in the moonshine. And now I am sifting together the flour and the spices. So come over here to the book. And it calls for... Uh, one and a half cups of, uh, oh wait, nope, sorry, that's the wrong, wrong area. There we go. It calls for the, uh, one and three quarter cup of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, a half teaspoon of ground clove, and a half teaspoon of ground ginger. So, um, I got all of that except for the clove, so we're just going to use the essential oil for that, so I'm going to only do like one drop. But so it's going to go on here, I'm going to sift it all together, and then yeah, we're going to continue. So we got all of the uh, flour and the um, seasoning or the uh, spices all mixed together. So now I have one and three quarter cups of butter with a uh, cup of sugar in the KitchenAid. So we are going to turn this on and we are going to cream this together. This is creamed together. So now we're going to take three eggs and one at a time, put them into the mixer and get them incorporated. And now we're just going to let this sit for about a minute and uh, scrape the sides down and get it all incorporated. Eggs have been scraped, eggs have been incorporated. We're now going to take our sponge, which was that uh, flour and yeast and all that from earlier. We're going to dump that into here. Come on, there we go. Now, we're going to turn the mixer back on, and we're going to get this all nice and incorporated. Pro tip, if you're using a KitchenAid, you are not a truck driver, remember that, okay? So you see here, you know, I got it up here. Okay, I'm not going to slam this back like that, we're not slamming gears, not good. 
that will break your KitchenAid faster. So you go back one click at a time. Nice and slow to keep everyone healthy and happy. Now, we're going to take our flour, add just a little bit. I'm sorry for the violent shaking. And we're going to mix. Now we're going to uh, add in all of the flour, and then we're going to get that all mixed up, and then we're going to add in the uh, dried, we're going to add in the dried fruit that's been soaking in the moonshine and uh, chopped walnuts. I don't know how much, I'll get back to you on that. <clears throat> I switched over to the paddle because the whisk was just did not cutting it, starting to get too thick, so I just switched over to that. Now we're going to take our dried fruit. Dump that in there. And then we're going to take a cup of chopped walnuts. These are pre-chopped walnuts. And there's about a cup left in the bag. So I'm just going to dump in the what's it, left. Okay. Now, turn it on. There we go. Nice and slow. And we're going to get those all nice and incorporated. And I know this is like the fifth time I've said incorporated. But I can't think of a better word. So it's incorporated. So I took it from the bowl and put it into our bunt pan. It's this is the one that we prepared earlier. And so it's going to rise. It shouldn't be more than an inch away from the top. And it already kind of is, but we're we're just gonna go with it. Anyway, I'm gonna set this on the rack above the wood stove and I got some cleaning to do. So uh yeah, I'm gonna do that and then we'll meet back when this is done rising. Okay, the oven is preheated to 375. Uh probably hit start. There we go. Okay, this is the uh, the cake itself. It has risen a lot. It says that there should be like an inch gap from the bottom, um, but I, I don't I don't know. I think that's just so it'll sit flat, but I think it'll be fine. So we're going to throw this into the oven, and then uh, yeah, we're going to bake it for 35 to 45 minutes. So the bun cake, it happened. It baked. It was a little soft, so we baked it some more. It, it turned out okay. It's crumbly here and this entire corner like fell off, but hey, you know what? It tastes delicious, so the looks don't matter. Now, to the glaze. I have one tablespoon, sorry, yes, tablespoon of softened butter <clears throat> in here along with two teaspoons of milk and one teaspoon or a half teaspoon of vanilla. I didn't measure the vanilla because, I mean, it's vanilla. It's just flavor. I don't really care. Do as you wish. Now, we're going to wait till this butter is melted, and then we are going to start to add in the powdered sugar. As you can see, everything is nice and melted. So now I have one cup here of powdered sugar, and we're just going to add in a little bit. Come on, come on, just a little bit. There we go. Just add a little bit at a time. And then mix. Now we're going to stir this together until all of it is combined and this is thickened and all of that is gone. So um, I added in all the rest of the powdered sugar. I uh, did add a little bit of milk because it was just a tad bit thick for my liking and then I pretty much just sat with a spoon and I just went like this and uh, boom, it's, it's, it's here. I love it. Thank you all for watching very much. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like to the YouTube channel. Uh, follow me on Instagram at uh, Bud Laurie. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And I hope you enjoy this. If you do, let me know down in the comments. I love reading y'all's comments. It, it's truly amazing. It, it, it warms my heart. But uh, yeah, y'all have a good night. I thought I'd throw this in last minute. Um, this, this cr creation is delicious. I love it so much. Not as good as Santor, but still delicious. Hey, if you haven't seen Santor, go watch that episode. After that episode, start from the beginning and just binge watch the entire thing. Uh, all right. Love you, fam. Bye.